Hi, and welcome to uh, a video about uh, my author journey. And uh, so this is the last kind of author journey video I'm going to get to do before my book launch, which is on Sunday, May 22nd at seven o'clock in the bar that you see behind me. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to include pictures of the bar and tried to do some of these videos from the bar is because a lot of my author journey started there. I do a lot of my writing there. I do a lot of my thinking and, and, and idea generation um, there. So at Birdie's Bar in Wimbledon, I found kind of a haven for my writing. And of course, obviously it's live. There's lots of people around on Thursday nights when I go to do my writing, I can get anywhere from no poems written to four poems written. Some of them are good, some of them aren't. You've read some of them. Uh, and I listen to the music and I enjoy the company of the regulars and the staff. But the thing about that part of my journey is that that is live and in-person and I can get feedback from people and I can talk to people, have conversations. Uh, one of the most difficult things I have learned on my author journey is that um, not everybody operates the same way. Not everybody uh, behaves the same way, appreciates the same way once you go from live and in-person to online. Now, there's no writer in existence at this point that doesn't learn about marketing and promoting and creating content and doing interviews. But I think that of all the things that I've learned on my, on my author journey, all the videos that I've told you the things that I've learned, probably promotion and extending out into the various different platforms that are available has been the most difficult. Um, I don't know, maybe it's it's my age group. I'm in that kind of transition between like Gen X and millennials. Um, maybe I, I just have this resistance because all of the reading and the writing that I do tends toward classical. Um, you know, a lot of my, uh, even my, most of my um, kind of free verse stuff tends to still feel kind of imagery deep, classical deep. Um, I guess it's just because of part of what the way that I am. I don't like putting my poetry out online because when I share it with somebody, I want it to be part of a book because that was always my poetry experience is picking up a poetry book, a variety collection from many authors or uh, collected poems of one of my favorite authors, uh, poets and, and short stories and, and things like that kind of gathered together and shared as a whole. And so um, I, I find it very difficult to kind of share my whole poems on a post or uh, my whole poems out on a video or, or sharing. I, I, I do it very rarely and, uh, you know, only during an interview when it's requested or when it's a poem that is extremely important to me to get out there for as many people as possible, like some of uh, the, my poem about home, my, my poem about um, you know, race relations and, and, and my poems, my poem about, you know, mental health, these sorts of things, I, I am perfectly happy to share freely. But most of my work, I want to share with somebody who's interested in sharing my work, because it's mine. So promotional stuff and marketing stuff has been the most difficult thing for me to do, because I want my work out there. And of course, I want as wide a readership as possible. But there's something that I find difficult and undoable about um, things that I have seen trending on, on social media, whether it's book talk or, or um, certain uh, hashtags and, and tags on, on Instagram or Twitter, I find it difficult to say, hey, I'm this close to this many followers, um, follow me and I'll follow you. Because when I follow someone on Twitter or when I follow someone on Instagram, I either know them personally or there's something about their feed that attracts me, whether it's their content or their stance in the, in the, the issues that they choose to raise or discuss. Uh, maybe it is the genre that they write in or their location. Uh, maybe it's because they've responded to something I've put out in my content and we seem to have a similar mindset 
when I look through someone's feed and I see something that I find interesting or that I am interested in seeing more of, I happily immediately follow them. And I would hope that the people who follow me are following me because they're interested in my work, whether it's my content or my writing or the images I put out, the writing prompts, or they have an interest in maybe the workshops that I that I have run before and will run again about writing. I, I, I find the whole kind of concept of numbers for numbers sake and um, analytics telling me that I need to post at this time or that I need to post 20 times a day or those kinds of things. I find that really, really difficult because I know there's a logic to it. I know that there is a scientific analytical basis for how these platforms work and how the most people will see my post if I follow these analytics. But there's something of the artist in me that kind of rebels against that pure numbers game. I like writing. I have a, a, an imaginary spaces uh, thing inspired by a, by a, a, a fellow author um, that I call, uh, mine I call The Attic. And I like to write it every day when something clicks. I don't, you know, necessarily want to plan it or schedule it so that it comes at the most trafficked time for my pieces. I want to be inspired in the moment and include it in my imaginary place, the attic. Um, I do create a lot of my writing prompts in advance and I, I schedule them for the same time every day, but all of that is mine. The, the photograph is mine, the work is mine, and, and so I'm proud of it. Uh, when preparing for my book launch, there was a whole new set of marketing tools and um, programs and things that I that I wanted to try to use because I was told that they would be more effective, they would be helpful in trying to get my event out there so that people would come to my book launch. But I think that um, it's difficult trying to make these contacts when you don't know people personally. And of course, you can't know people personally without already making the contacts. I tried contacting local newspapers. I tried contacting local community groups to kind of see if they were interested in talking in, in maybe putting an advert in their newsletter or making a press release about a local a release about a local event. But um, unfortunately, many emails later and many attempts to at least at the very least find the right person to contact have been really difficult. And you know, and I understand you know, that it shouldn't just be every, every person in free access and all of that. But at the same time, I'm a teacher. I help teenagers learn and, and develop their own, uh, their own writing, help them develop their own voice. I use my voice. I do the things that I ask my students to do. I tell them it matters. And I, I try to be as, as faithful and, and, and ethical to my art as possible. And so I feel like that's worthy. I feel that that is a worthy way for an artist to behave today and that we should pass things on and we should allow people to grow and, and join us, uh, support each other. And, you know, when I see a writer's lift, I will go through the list and I will follow those that I, I like and I, that I, whose content I'm interested in. I will retreat those whose, whose work I'm interested in. I will tag and like and, and engage with the people whose content interests me, but I, I I find it very difficult when people say, "Oh well, I followed you, now you follow me," and, or pin for pin, or you know, let's boost each other up by spreading it as wide as possible. In theory, I get why that's great, but also I want people who are genuinely interested in my work to follow me, not just because they saw it on some feed, but because something I put out has meaning to them, and. I, I, again, guess that's old fashioned and, and, you know, that I can't find the whole kind of concept of promoting and marketing easy. I find it exhausting. Um, I know it's necessary, but I hope that, you know, other authors realize the struggle is real, that they are, that they are not alone, that we all kind of struggle with this. I guess I've never met an author that actually enjoys marketing, that enjoys promoting an event or a book, then most of us just enjoy the creation of art. Um, 
I, I do know people who enjoy lifting others up that interviewing and podcasting others and they're fantastic people. I love interacting with them. Um, but yeah, I find, I find a lot of the whole things that we have to do now in order to get our work out there and our art out there seen is, is quite difficult. So I hope that, you know, my honesty and, 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 you know, criticism, self-criticism um, is at least, at least explain some of why my posts are occasionally late or my videos are occasionally late. Um, but, you know, I also hope that if anybody else who is a writer or self-published or independent or, you know, that really struggles with marketing and promotion realizes that they're, they're not the only ones we, I, I do. And most of the people I've met have. So if you do help your fellow writers, obviously lift each other up, but be aware not everybody wants to uh, exchange. And it's not always a criticism of your work. It's not always a criticism of your feed or your content. Sometimes it's just what people are interested in. That's how I feel about people following me and how I feel about following someone. I want it to be genuine because, you know, we're all here pouring our hearts out. So that's part of my author journey. I hope to see you on Sunday at Birdie's Bar in Wimbledon to celebrate the release of my third collection if you're interested and do feel free to spread the link that's in the comments to anybody who might be interested that lives in the area. Okay. Thank you. And I'll see you guys on Sunday.